Or do you feel like I'm going to lose my voice? Okay. So, architectural perspective. So, when we go back to thinking about the perspective, we need to go back to when we were creating perspectives in Photoshop about two months ago. Okay. So, some of the things that we talked about, even though we weren't, we didn't create the main object that's in the perspective at that time, we still want to apply all of the uh, the ideas and all the things that we talked about to this perspective. Okay, so you're going to need to think about uh, the actual perspective of the image. Where am I placing my my building? Okay, think about sunlight. Think about what the objects in your scene look like and how that relates to how you plot your image. Okay, so where are the shadows coming from in the scene that you're going to place your building into? Okay, you'll need to make sure that when you pick your shadows in SketchUp that they relate and that they are the same, okay? Otherwise, it leads a kind of a false sense of reality. Your goal is to create as photorealistic as possible of a perspective, okay? I'm not expecting absolute photorealism, but um, I've seen lots of students do, do near that, okay? We're using realistic background. We're using realistic uh, materials, okay? So there's no reason why it can't be, you know, pretty darn realistic. All right. Um, ultimately, it's going to end up being the nicest piece in your portfolio. So uh, go back, and if you need to watch any of the previous lectures, although I'll probably repeat a lot of those tips and tricks today, but um, be thinking about all of those things. Okay. So I already have my my little cabin already set up. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do, I'm not going to need to create a section, but I'm going to want to create a scene for this perspective, okay? Ideally, a perspective, and when I say perspective, I'm saying like the human eye perspective, not, not a bird's eye, okay? So not the way that I'm looking at it now. I'm talking about what it would look like from the human eye, all right? So ideally, you're gonna wanna place your camera in a place uh, that is about equivalent to the human eye. So about five feet, okay, six feet, something kind of about like that. All right. Um, so I would say something about in the fashion of what I have now would be pretty ideal. Okay. There's even a little human guy in my scene that will help you determine where that is. If you can see over the top of your building or you can see the roof of your building, you're too high. All right. So I'm going to delete this little, this little fellow that we have here. I'm going to place my cabin in about the middle of my scene. Okay. Ideally, you want to see uh, two sides of your building fairly well, okay, so that you can see the, the utmost, uh, you want to see all the materiality, you want to see all the shadows that you could possibly show. So this is, you know, the final image that we're doing and you're showing off the, your building in the best fashion that you can, okay? So pick the side of your building that's the most photogenic, all right? So I would say this is probably mine. I have the angled roofs, I have a nice little overhang, I got lots of glass. So I think this is by far the most interesting side of my building. Could also do this side if I wanted to as well. It doesn't really matter. They're, they're basically the same. So I'm going to set up my scene. I'm going to say about like that is, is going to be pretty ideal. Okay. As soon as I get that, I'm going to go up to view. I'm going to turn off my axes. You're going to turn off your guides or your section cuts if they have, if those are active. Okay. So I'm going to go over to scenes and I'm going to save that scene just like we've done for our section, our floor plans and our elevation. Okay. And you can rename that perspective if you want to. Okay. To recap, remember if you move around in your scene, all you got to do is double click on that scene that you just created and it will pull you right back to uh, the original scene that you created. Okay. So once we have that, we can begin the export process like we've done for our past uh, imagery, okay? So the first scene that I'm gonna create is Hidden Line. Right now it's already set up in Hidden Line, okay? If I go over to Styles and I go to uh, under the little, next to the right of the little house and I go down to Default Styles, you would click on Hidden Line and you'll get what you see here, okay? So once I have that, I'm gonna go up to File, Export 2D Graphic, all right, and I'm gonna go ahead and place this first image into today's folder, week 17B, I'll create that. All right, so week 17B, 
content. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and place my Yosemite house, hidden line, perspective, image into this folder. Okay, so something about like that. Before I hit export, I wanna make sure that I up the export settings so that I have a nice high quality image. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to options, uncheck use view size, and I'm gonna change the width of this to about three to 4,000 pixels, okay? That's a good size image for you know a nice uh, large image that might be placed on a 24 by 36 inch board. Okay, if that's the way that you're presenting it, you're not going to be printing it, or you're not going to be presenting it to me that way. But you might be doing this in a in one of your other classes to where you might need to do that. Okay, so I'm going to say 4,000, and I'm going to say OK, and go ahead and say export, and that's going to be my first scene that I'm going to export. Okay, so just like the previous classes, I'm going to pick a couple others. Whatever you choose to pick is completely up to you. All right, so I'm going to do a sketchy line one. We'll do pen gray, as that's what I usually pick. Actually, I kind of like this one. It's kind of nice. I'm going to say sketchy, what is this one called? Permanent marker fine. It's kind of nice. So I'm going to pick that. So I'm going to say file, export, 2D graphic, and let's call this. Uh, permanent marker. All right, and I'm going to say export. Okay, another option that we could do is we could do x ray. Actually, I'm not even going to do x ray because we're at a nice perspective right now that I can see through most of my windows. So doing the x ray is not really going to solve anything. Okay, I don't want to necessarily add, add work to what it is that we're doing. Okay, so I'll keep it nice and simple. I'll do uh, the sketchy lines, I'll do hidden line, and I'm gonna do a shadows layer. Okay, so for shadows, I'm gonna go over to edit, and I'm gonna turn off my edges. Okay, actually, let's leave, let's leave my edges on for just a second. And uh, let's turn on shadows. So I'm gonna go over to shadows, turn those on. And we want to manipulate these in a fashion that we get a nice, interesting, but dramatic shadow. Okay, we don't want it to be too overbearing. All right, we don't want it to be, like right now it's completely saturating the side of the building. Okay, so I'm gonna pick maybe, uh, let's see, maybe a time where it's not quite so intense. So maybe about like that. Okay, I got a little shadow on the side, but not all the way. But I also have some shadow over, under my overhang. Okay, so that's fairly ideal. All right, and then now my computer will autosave, as usual. So we'll let that work out for just a second. Are there any other styles that you guys have found pretty interesting? Anybody in my class? Victor? Any other styles that you've used that worked out pretty well for your blending? Other than the ones that we've talked about or have you used the same ones? We've done x-ray, so you've used that one quite a bit. Okay, so that's work. That's worked out. Anybody else? Which one? Okay, we'll have to try that one. I've used that one before. That's a good one too. Okay, so now that we have our shadows, your computer freezing. Yeah, I try to save it in anything other than the default resolution. <laughs> okay, we'll look at it in a second. Let's not worry about it for for a few minutes. Um, okay, so now that we have the shadow, all right, I'm going to go over to back to styles and I'm going to turn off the edges, okay? So that all we get is just a layer of only the shadows with no lines, okay? Again, the reason why we do this is so that we have an individual layer that we can use to manipulate the shadows versus that layer being tied to one of your other scenes, okay? So as soon as I get that, this actually is nice because I actually have shadows inside the building too. So it creates an extra le level of depth that we wouldn't necessarily have in an elevation or a section. All right, so this looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and say file, export, 2D graphic, and I'm gonna call this shadows. All right, export. All right, so that's gonna be it for the SketchUp portion of today's exercise.
okay? So now that we have that, we can go into Photoshop and we can start to lay out our scene, okay? So let's go ahead and take a second to open up Photoshop. And I can now start to import those different files. Okay, so I'm gonna go file open and let's go to today's folder in our thumb drive. Don't forget to save, back up all of your content at the end of the semester. So as soon as you're done with this class, even though I hope everyone's been doing it periodically, because I know a few people it's, it's bit them in the butt once or twice throughout the semester. I know I've heard a few unfortunate cases of losing files. So make sure to back up everything at the end of the semester. You may never need it again, but you may want to reference all your work in this class at another point. So. Um, I can still to this day go back and reference all of my work I did in college almost 10 years ago. So that's good. Even though I don't, I rarely look at it, but sometimes I want to. So it, it certainly has come into handy. All right, so I'm going to open up Hidden Line. All right, and this is going to be, this looks good. It's nice and centered. We have some area for the foreground. We have some area for the background as well. Okay, and that, that's, that's ideal for a really successful perspective. Okay, so we have a nice even amount of area all around our building. Okay, so that's going to be our hidden line image. I'm going to go ahead and do file place. And I'm going to drop in my permanent marker. Okay, that looks good. I actually really like this one. This looks, I think this is going to turn out nice. I'm going to say file place. And I'm going to go ahead and place my shadows on top of that. File place and shadows. Okay, from this point, everyone should know what to do from here. We're going to go and rasterize all of our layers so that they be, so that they can become editable. All right, so I'm going to say uh, layer from background on our background layer, and I'm going to say hidden line. Okay, rasterize my other two layers, rasterize, rasterize, and I'm going to take take each of those layers, and I'm going to apply the multiply blending mode. Okay, so that they all can become transparent. Um, if you guys get to the point where you are, maybe you, I'm assuming the background image that you're gonna place in there probably has a lot of trees, but if you wanna add more trees, uh, which people certainly do, um, don't forget, if it's not a PNG already, you can always apply that multiply blending mode to it if it has a white background. So it becomes transparent and you don't have to spend a bunch of time cropping that image out. It becomes a very useful uh, tool when it comes to creating scenes in Photoshop, okay? So I may do that once I create my, my scene to kind of show you what I mean, all right? So first, first hidden line, let's go ahead and apply multiply blending mode. Second one, multiply again. We're not seeing any effect because all of these two layers are below the one that does not have it applied yet. But last but not least, let's add multiply to the top one. And now you can see kind of the culmination of of all three of those layers overlaying on top of each other. Okay, so that looks that looks pretty good. Okay, so we can see the sketchy line, we can see the hidden line, and we can see kind of the depth of the shadows beyond that. Oops, I accidentally moved my shadow. There we go, that looks a lot better. Okay, so now that we have that, I am going to turn off, I'm going to turn off my top two layers just so that we have a couple basic layers to work with. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna place a background image, okay? So you can go over to Creative Commons as we usually do, find that background image, creativecommons.org. Ah, you, you miss one letter and it automatically takes you somewhere else. Creative Commons with a plural. All right, so we're gonna go to search the commons we're gonna click on Flickr and I'm gonna say, uh, Flickr and I'm gonna say Yosemite Meadow. Okay, and let's find a nice image that would work really well. Okay, so this is a good one. I'm gonna to try to pick something maybe with a, few, a little bit more trees in the background. Let's see, da, 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 da. this is a nice one. I'm gonna go ahead and choose, 
I'm gonna choose this one just because I love Half Dome. Okay, so I'm gonna choose this image right here as my background image. I am going to, well, look at the guy that posted it. He works out a lot, Everett. Let's see, download this photo. I'm gonna pick the nice large original size, 6,000 by 4,000. Okay, I would show in folder. I'm gonna download this to, or I'm gonna copy and paste it into today's folder. Okay, control C, control V. That's gonna be my background Yosemite image. Okay, from here I can go to file place. I can take that image that I just created, place it into my scene. All right, it's already a pretty large image. We shouldn't have to worry about it distorting. I'm holding down shift as I make this larger and expand it into my scene, okay? Um, let's see, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna make it even larger. I'd say that's about, eh, let's make it a little smaller. I just want it to be large enough to fill the sides. I can crop the white space off a little bit later. Okay, so I'm gonna say, uh, click on the check mark, place that into my scene and I'm gonna place this image below my hidden line, okay? I'm also, <clears throat> actually, let's leave it above. I'm gonna make it about 50% opacity right now just so I can kind of get an idea of where my building is in the background, okay? I wanna make sure that my, uh, this brings us back to the time we talked about horizon lines, okay? We talked about where, where we want that horizon line to be, okay? Ideally, that horizon line is probably going to be about in the in the middle of my glazing. Okay, so I want to make sure that that horizon line, which in this case you can't see it, this is not like an ocean photo where uh, you can clearly just see the horizon, but we have mountains in the background, so you're going to have to kind of estimate it just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to say that it's about right there in my scene. Okay, so we can see here that our horizon is probably right about in this area back here okay maybe it's a little bit lower okay so it's about about like that okay so as soon as you're comfortable with where that spot is okay I'm gonna go ahead and hide this hidden line drawing or hide my background photo I'm gonna duplicate my hidden line drawing I'm gonna say okay I'm gonna move it just below my background image okay so as soon as I have that I am going to use my magic wand tool. So I'm gonna go up here, click on the quick selection, drop down, click on magic wand, and I'm gonna select the area that surrounds my cabin. Okay, as soon as you have that, I can then go click on my background layer, turn it back on, and I'm gonna click on add layer mask. Okay, and it will automatically cut out that area that was surrounding your magic wand tool. Okay. And now we can see our background that lays beyond our cabin, okay? So this looks pretty good, okay? I'd say this looks pretty good. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the thumbnail of the background image. I can turn the opacity back up to 100%, okay? And let's spend a second analyzing this photo and how we can improve it, okay? What are some things that we notice about this photo right now that kind of gives away its realism. Any guesses? Yeah, what, I mean, I know we haven't finished the perspective. There's a few things that we haven't done yet that would help add to the realism of the image. What are some things that we've done in the past that would be useful for this exercise? Actually, absolutely, good good point. So let's back up just a, just a hair, good point. In fact, I usually do that, I just didn't think about it there for a second. So you made the point that we need to select our windows. This is an architectural perspective, so we need to be able to see through them. So I am going to, uh, come on, zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and I want to also, amongst selecting the background, I want to select the areas in my windows. Okay, so we even have a little little guy right there. Okay, here's a door, window, 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 even a little window right there. Is that also a window? Oh, maybe that's a wall. 
I need to have some wall. Otherwise, I'm not going to be. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to see my building. <laughs> you don't want to have too much glass. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see it. Okay, here's a couple more windows back here. Okay, so let's select all of our windows and let's go back. We'll do the same process. I'm going to turn on that background image, select it, and I'm going to say add layer mask. Okay, that that looks good. That's the way that we want that to look. Okay. So now that we have that. We can do what we just did again. Let's add, make our opacity back to 100%. And let's go back to my original question. What are some things that we could do to this to add to the realism? The glass? Absolutely. Okay, and I'll, I'll go back and I'll do that in a second. So you could add a reflection onto the glass. Okay, right now we can see through a glass, but right now you really can't see uh, the glass that's in the foreground. Okay. So let's actually, let's, let's tackle that right now. So if we were to do that, we would need to find another background image, okay? We need a, our image that we can use as in, a reflection image for our glass that's in the front, okay? So ideally that background image would probably be pretty similar to what we have, uh, actually, would that be a background? I guess that would be like what's behind you but it's not really in the background. I guess it's kind of like a foreground image, but basically it's gonna look the same. There's gonna be lots of trees, there's gonna be mountains, the sky, and that's what's gonna be reflecting in your windows, okay? So you can find that image on Creative Commons. I'm sure I have a million on my thumb drive already, so I'm gonna say File Place. Um, let's see, File Place. I'm gonna pick something slightly different, so if I just go backwards a couple classes, I'm sure I have one. Okay, I'm gonna use this one right uh, right here. That looks good. Actually, I want some clouds. I'm gonna use this one right here. Background image. Let's place that in here. I want it to be about the same size as the image that I just created. Doesn't have to be perfect though, but again, the um, horizon wants to be about in the same place. Okay, that looks good. It's gonna be a reflection. It's gonna be very faint. You're not really gonna be able to read what's really on the windows, but you want the scenery to be pretty close to the same. All right, so I'm gonna place that right here. Actually, let's place that right there for a second. Let's turn that off, okay? And I'm also gonna turn off my background image. And let's begin to select the windows in my foreground, okay? This might be a little bit trickier than selecting the windows in the background because we were kind of trying to select a bunch of areas where there's multiple lines in place, okay? So I'm gonna select my hidden line layer and you could use your magic wand. You could go through it here and just keep expanding the view to where it includes all of these little areas. So it might be like that, like that. Okay, so that's, that's one. Okay, bear with me for a sec as I go through and fill these in. So I'm just gonna keep using my magic wand tool. You could also use your quick selection tool. You could also use your polygonal lasso. That's also an option, okay? But I'm gonna be thinking about where that pane of glass is. I don't care about what's in the background. I'm only worried about what's in the foreground. So that's that grouping of glass. So bear with me for a sec, it might take me two minutes or so. Okay, almost there. Actually, not really. I'm kind of fooling you. Okay, you can also use the quick selection tool, so you could select that. See, this is actually probably a little faster, but it's very sensitive. You can turn down the sensitivity. Uh, let's see, up here, I could say hardness. I could bring that down. Okay, I don't really like that shape, but I can also use my polygonal lasso. Okay, so if I'm trying to select that area in this area right here, see how I'm just holding down shift and that filled in that remaining area. So I'm basically just selecting these little tiny areas that are left by themselves, okay? I could also trace these spaces like so. 
Again, holding down shift because I want the plus sign. So there's about three or four different ways that you can ultimately select these windows. This may be the easiest one. Because you're just tracing, just tracing rectangles. Okay, something that's important to remember when you're working on a perspective is that for it to have the ultimate realism it comes down to all the tiny details. Okay, so all the little things that you might be thinking, yeah, you know, I could probably skip that. I don't know if it'll have that great of an effect. It will have a big effect. Okay, all of those little things. If you decide to say that to three or four different things, it's not going to look that good. So I, you know, I would encourage you to do this to every do every little detail that you know how to do for this exercise. Okay, sorry this is taking a second, but it is gonna look good. This is a nice little add-on. So again, I missed this area, so I can just fill this in. Okay, so we got quite a few of the windows, but we still got a few more. I should realize that I don't want that area. So I'm holding down Alt right now, holding down Alt to remove an area of my selection. Okay, so like right here, holding down Alt, you can see that minus sign. Okay, just a couple more windows. See, Victor, you picked a really good one, but it takes some time. It's all right. I hope everyone does the same thing to theirs as well, because this it will look sharp. And last but not least, our final window. Okay, so there we have all of our windows. All right, so the next thing that I could do, I could do a couple things. I could just create the layer mask. Okay, that, that is certainly an option. Okay, I could also add a block of color to these first. I might recommend that first because if you want to go back and create a layer mask of that, it's a lot easier to select those blocks of color. Okay, so what I might do is um, you could either go up to uh, layer and you could add a new fill layer. I am actually just going to fill this in because it's easier to select the color here in just a second. So I'm going to go to my brush. You could also go over to edit fill. That would work fine too. I'm gonna pick a color. I'm gonna pick like a nice blue gray. And I'm gonna fill in the front window, windows like this. Whoops, actually, sorry, let's back up. Let's add a new layer. So this is on its own separate layer. And now let's do that. Okay. So that looks good, okay? With that same selection still in place, all right, with the same selection still in place, I'm gonna move that hidden line copy just below my background image, okay? I'm gonna take that background image, I'm gonna rasterize it, and I'm gonna select that image, and I am going to say, create layer mask, okay? And you can see here, I don't know why can I not see it? Oh, because it's not turned on, there we go. So turn on that layer mask, and now I can see all that in the background. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the opacity of this by a lot. I'm gonna say maybe let it be about 20% so that you just see a faint hint of the reflection. Okay, I've also added that blue tint here in the background, which I'm actually, actually gonna place on top of it. Okay, so there's that blue tint. And I'm also gonna apply an opacity to this. I'm gonna say like 20%, maybe 30%. You might have to mess around with it a little bit until you get ultimately what you want okay so that looks good perfect so that's going to be the reflection of our window so good good suggestion 
So let's turn on our background image again. What's another thing that we could do to add some realism to this scene? What about grass? So right now, if I look at my building, it looks like it's just kind of plopped right on top of this scene. I got lots of tall grass here in my scene, okay? So um, it would be great to add some grass to this so that it looks like the edge, it's actually planted in place on the scene, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my background layer, all right? I'm gonna go to my background layer and I am going to, uh, let's see, how do I wanna, let me think about my, my process of how I'm gonna do this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my background layer and I'm actually going to take my rectilinear marquee and I'm gonna copy a little segment right around the base of the building, okay? And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to use that area as my selection for when I use my clone stamp but I don't want to apply it to the same layer as the background. Okay, so I'm just gonna say copy, control C to copy that. I'm gonna add a new layer, control V. Okay, notice, whoops, I didn't mean to uh, add it to a group, but now notice that that layer is now, I now have that little selection as its own layer, okay? So I am going to turn off this background and I'm gonna work with just this as my, uh, as my little layer that's gonna have all of my grass on it. So again, I'm gonna click on my hidden line layer, take my magic wand tool, select the outside of my building, okay? And I'm gonna select that layer two, and it's called layer two grass layer. Okay, I'm gonna select that layer and I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna say, or selecting that grass layer, and I'm gonna say uh, create layer mask, okay? So that my building is cut out of that little segment, okay? So still working on that layer, I'm gonna select the, um, the little thumbnail, and I can now start to add some grass to the edge of my building, okay? So I'm gonna go over to my clone stamp tool. So clone stamp tool, and actually before I forget, let's go ahead and save this. It would be terrible if I just lost this work suddenly. So let's save it real quick. And let's hit save. Let it do its thing. Okay, so now that I have my clone stamp tool activated, I'm gonna change it to tool number 134. The size of my grass I'm gonna say is, I'd say about 134 is also pretty correct or about pretty close. Right, holding down alt right now so that I could select the grass, okay? Remember that, you know, if I look at this scene, I got some brown grass here, I got some green grass, and I have some different variations of green. So I wanna make sure that as I copy this, that it copies the color of grass from the area around it. So if I wanna draw grass right here up along the side of the building, I'm gonna select the grass from this area. So I'm holding down Alt, I'm gonna select that brown grass, and I'm gonna start to and let me move this layer up. Okay, I'm gonna start to, so let's see, why is that not, it should be showing, it's on the uppermost layer. Let me think about this for a second. Oh, you know what? It's because I just used my my layer mask. Okay, let me back up just a second. So I cut out that area right there, which I, I didn't necessarily want to do. Let's see. Let me move this to the back. Let's see. Well, I know I just got one layer that I accidentally mixed up. Let me back up, let me go get rid of that layer mask, okay? Let's see, let me think about this for just a second. Okay, so let me, okay, I know what I did wrong. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and apply that. Let's leave the layer mask the way that it was, okay? So let me go forward, let me say step forward. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna leave this little piece like this, but I'm gonna create another layer. 
and let it be on top of that because I want that the reason why I couldn't see it is because I was applying the grass to an area that I had already removed using the layer mask. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that thumbnail. I'm gonna select the grass right here, but before I start adding my grass, I'm gonna click on my new layer, okay? So now I could start drawing that. Okay, that looks good, that's what I want. But it's a little bit too big, so let's reduce the size of it a bit. And now I can start to add that grass along that edge. Okay, so I'm gonna fill up that grass like so. You may need to go back and forth between the couple different layers, all right, so that you can blend it nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this to the edge of my building. Notice that it's continuing to change the color of that grass. All right, and I'm gonna go all the way along the edge. Okay, I can still see the line below it. That's okay, I'm gonna fix that here in just a sec. All right, and I'm gonna to continue to add that grass along the edge of my building. Okay, so remember that this is a perspective. So as I go backwards, technically the grass needs to get a little smaller. Okay, I may, I may even add a couple little uh, hints of some maybe some taller shades of grass up in the front. Maybe it's a little overgrown, okay? Something kind of about like that. But as I go towards the back, this is a perspective, so the grass is gonna get a little bit smaller, okay? Remember that you have a vantage point and that grass is gonna get a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the size of that brush, okay? And I can continue to add that grass like so. And it's getting even smaller, so I can make it even smaller from there. About like that. Okay, so I'd say that, that, that looks pretty good, all right? That building is starting to feel rooted into place into our perspective, okay? If I turn on my background layer again, you can see here that that looks nice, okay? If I want to, right now I can still see that line of that building. If I do not want to see that line, I could take that hidden line layer and I can move it backwards behind the grass, okay? Now you can't see that line, okay? Now it looks even better, all right? We're starting to get a, a nice realistic sense to the building, minus the fact that it's stark white. Although my boss would love it. My boss would love it because he grew up loving Corbu and everything in the office is pure white and this is probably how he would design a cabin in Yosemite. But uh, okay, let's move on to the next part. So we have a background image. We have a nice rooted building. We have a reflection on our windows, so that looks nice, okay? So some of the last steps would be to probably add a person, okay? A person would help add a sense of scale. And you're also gonna want to add some materials, okay? I'm gonna add one material. I'll add material to my base. I'll go back and add some of the others in a second, and then I'll add the person, and we'll be about done. Okay, we'll, we'll be fairly complete. I'll probably make a few little finishing touches to make it look super realistic after the lecture is over. Otherwise, you'll be watching me for like 45 minutes. I don't want you to do that. So, but let's add the materials to the base of my building, okay? So you can find your materials on Creative Commons. I know everyone knows how to do that. I'm gonna do File Place, and I'm gonna go to my little material library that I've accumulated over the last few days. So textures, let's see. I'm gonna do, uh, let's see. I'm gonna do some concrete. So I got this nice board form concrete right here. So I'm gonna say place, all right? This looks pretty good. I'm gonna place this image towards the top. I'm gonna go ahead and just say place. Move it to the top of my layers, okay? Now, the thing that we have to think about now, we're not doing an elevation, so we're not looking at it in pure elevation, okay? We're gonna to need to manipulate the texture so that it corresponds with the perspective that we're looking at in the image, okay? So to do that, we're gonna still wanna tile it, all right? I'm gonna duplicate it twice. Let's duplicate it once, all right? Let's turn off the second version of it because I'm gonna want it for this side over here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say Control T, Control T on the original image, Control T and that's gonna be the transform tool. If I hold down control, 
I can then start to transform or manipulate that texture, okay? The goal being that I want to try to mimic the perspective in my scene as much as possible. So it might look something about like this, and I'm gonna kinda eyeball it a little bit. Actually, let's place this. I'm gonna make it a little transparent just so that I can kinda see my background image as well. Okay, again, Control T. And holding down Control, I'm gonna try to put this image on that plane. So about like that. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the scale of this a little bit, about like that. And let's even reduce it a lot more on this side, okay? So you can see that by doing that, it actually starts, it'll start to look like the material is actually going in the perspective that the image is going in. Okay, and we also have a little slant on the side of my wall. So I'd say that's probably pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and accept that place that into the right, actually let's fix this edge right here so it's about like that, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and place that, leave it there, and I'm gonna turn on my other layer, okay? Let's also make it 70%, and I'm gonna place this texture on this side, I'm gonna perform the same task. Okay, so Control T, I'm gonna line up these edges over here, about like that. Remember that if I'm using a material that has lines on it, I want those lines to match up. Okay, I want those lines to line up on that edge. And I'm gonna take this side, place it over here, and I can start to manipulate that texture so that it feels like it's going in that direction. So about like that. Okay. The goal at the end of this exercise is that when you're all said and done, you want to ask yourself, does this look real? You know, is it, or is it at least believable? I'm sure everyone will probably be able to tell that's not real, but you want it to be as close as you can get it. In the earlier exercises, we tiled some of these things. Yeah. Tile yes, you could tile. Right now, luckily, my image is large enough. I don't need to tile it. But if you're doing something like brick and maybe the image isn't large enough, then yes, you could certainly tile it. So technically, you could say I've tiled it right now. I've just, I'm just not going on the same surface. All right, so I'm going to take both of these textures, all right, and I'm going to select them both. And I'm going to say merge layers. And I'm going to go ahead and name it. I'm going to say base concrete texture okay and I'm gonna move my hidden line copy below that okay because those need to correlate and I'm going to turn off the texture I'm going to use my magic wand I'm gonna select the bases of my building like so because that's the area that I want the texture to be applied to alright I'm gonna turn on that base concrete texture like so and I'm gonna say apply layer mask okay and now you can see that texture is now applied to the base of the building and does it actually feel like it's it has somewhat of a perspective that's you know I'd say it, it probably needs a, a little bit of work it's, it's pretty close if I spend an extra few minutes on it I'm sure I could dial it in a little bit more but that's that's good enough for what we're doing okay so from there I can click on the thumbnail okay um, oh you know what I didn't I didn't mean to do let me back up just a, a scotch. Let me go back to before I merge them. So before I merge them, I reduce the opacity to 70% on both. Okay, when I merge them, it makes that one layer and it puts this back up to 100%. So make sure before you do this to turn that back up to 100%. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck at that opaque, with that opaque material. Okay, so now I can merge it. Okay, same process, move the hidden line back up. Turn this off. Let's select all three or all four surfaces. Okay, turn the texture back on and apply layer mask. Okay, I'd say that looks that looks pretty good. Okay, if I want to move that hidden line layer below or down below. All right. I'd say that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna move that layer two that I have. That's the layer that has my grass. I'm gonna move that above, so just keep the layers in mind, okay? I'm gonna call this grass layer two.
okay? And I can start to apply some of my other materials, okay? I'm gonna use my magic wand tool, select hidden line, and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna make a color for all of my mullions, okay? So I'm gonna say all of my mullions are gonna be these guys. So I'm gonna select them, select them there right here too. These should be a lot easier and a lot quicker. Okay, one more little area right there. You can even select what's on the inside. Don't forget that we have the inside as well. Looks like I got it. And let's select this little area. And this area here, here, there, there, and there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'll even have a few up here as well. In fact, I even have a little window right there that I forgot to cut out earlier. So that's something to just keep in mind, okay? So now that I've selected all those mullions, I am going to create a, if I wanna add a pure color to this, what kind of layer would I add? Just a color? Yeah, a new fill layer, right? So I can always go back and change the color later on down the road. So I'm gonna say mullion color, okay. And I'm going to say I want my mullions to be a nice aluminum. Okay, so maybe it's a nice gray. Something about like that. Okay, and I'm going to say okay. All right. So I'll go back and I'll add some more materials to my, my beams and whatnot. And at the end of the day, you'll see a nice realistic uh, elevation. But let's work on a few other things. So this takes a little bit of time, so bear with me for a little bit. All right, let's begin to work on our shadows a little bit. So if I turn on my shadows, I'm gonna go back down to the bottom. Right now our shadow layer is currently hidden. Okay, but if I turn on my shadows, which is right here, you can see that right now our shadow, and let's actually move that layer, let's move that shadow layer up to the top. Okay, right now our shadows are very bland. Okay, they don't have a lot of dimension to them. We could certainly add some nice effects to them, okay? So remember to do that, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to create a dodge and burn layer on top of that so that we can add some darkness and some variation in color to our shadows, okay? So I'm gonna say, uh, let's see, new layer. New layer, I'm gonna call this dodge and burn. And the mode is going to be overlay. We're gonna add a 50% neutral gray say okay and then i'm going to say control alt g to that layer so that the dodge and burn only applies to my shadow okay and then from here i can then begin to use the tool to add some depth to that shadow so i'm going to say i'm going to grab my dodge tool or i'm sorry my burn tool first remember that we want a nice soft brush like this that has gradient okay and a larger brush is usually preferred so something about like that, okay? And it's actually probably a little bit too big. I can then go in and start to add some color variation to the shadow below my overhang, okay? So we might have some darker shadows over here, maybe on the ground. Okay, maybe under here, which we probably need a smaller brush. So something about like that. Get it nice and dark under there. Okay, I could do the same thing over here. Get that nice and dark under this overhang. So this becomes a really rich elevation. Okay, so that looks nice. Maybe a little bit under this little edge. Okay, and I'm even gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna, instead of doing the dodge tool, I'm gonna, or the burn tool, I'm gonna say dodge, and I'm gonna soften the boundary towards the bottom of my elevation. Okay, so there's not such a crisp line along the edge of the building. Okay, I want it to be nice and soft so it kind of fades into the edge, okay? Especially like right here, you can really see that really stark and harsh line. 
Okay, I'd say that looks pretty good. Okay, and that's going to be my, my shadows layer. I can even go back here and do this edge a little bit as well. Okay, so that's adding some nice depth and shadows to my building. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to do with you before I let you loose is I'm going to add a person into my scene. Okay, I want to add a couple people for scale into the scene. And we're going to do a little bit of review over some of this, the topics that we've talked about in the past to making that look realistic, especially in a nice field of grass. This is, all, this is the ultimate test of how good you could be with, with Photoshop. Okay, so hopefully I pass it. So I'm going to do File Place. I'm going to find my people that I want to use for my scene. You can find them online. You can find them on the Digital Tools website. You probably have several that you found in the past too. Let's see, do I have any in here? No, let's see, I know I have them close by. I think 16A, people, perfect. Okay, let's see, uh, we have our people, perfect. And make sure you pick the right person too. I wouldn't add this nice pretty gal in the white dress because yeah, she probably wouldn't be wearing a really nice white dress walking through a field in Yosemite. Maybe she would be, but pick a person that fits the scene uh, as well as you can. Okay, so file place. We'll add these people to our scene. We're going to say that they're maybe walking, uh, we'll say about in, maybe they're walking towards our front entry. Okay, so I'm going to want to reduce the scale of them. So don't place quite yet. Whoops. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So file place, let's pick the same people. Okay, and I'm gonna hold down shift and I wanna reduce the size of them. Remember, you want their eyes to be about at that horizon line, okay? So I'd say that's probably about right there. So I'm gonna say place, okay? But just like our building, our people don't feel entirely rooted to the scene, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and place them right on top of, or I'm gonna move my grass layer that I created earlier and I'm gonna move them right below the people, okay? So that I can use that as my grass layer for the people, okay? And in fact, I think I could probably use my, the same grass layer that I used here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, let's actually move it right below that one. Which one do we like better? I'd say probably that. So let's leave it like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and, let's see, let's move, we're gonna want this grass layer all the way at the very top. Okay. And I'm gonna to wanna to cut out the grass right here, okay, so that doesn't happen. So I can do that easily by selecting that people layer using my, uh, I'm gonna use my, let's see, my quick selection tool. And I'm just going to pick the purse, the gal, hold down, and I'm also going to pick the guy right here, and I'm just going to delete, I'm going to click on that grass layer, and I'm going to get rid of, just like that, I'm going to get rid of that grass that's there in the background, okay? So control D to deselect, and I, I can now start to add the grass around their feet, okay? So I'm going to click on my grass layer with the image. Okay, and I'm going to use my clone stamp tool. Make sure we have kind of a large stamp here. Let's pick the grass stamp here, 134. And I'm going to select the grass in front of their feet. Go back to the grass layer that has all the grass on it. Okay, I'm going to kind of cover that up a little bit. Okay, see how we're doing that? That brush is probably a little bit too big. But I'm going to cover up the feet so that it doesn't look like, so it looks like they're rooted into place. So about like that. I'd say that looks pretty good. Okay. You guys could go through and uh, use the dodge and burn tool if you needed to to kind of fix the lighting on the people. These are all the tiny little details that start to add to the realism. Is the lighting on the house correct? Is the lighting on the people correct? Okay. Those are all things that make it look more realistic. So. Take the approach that we're taking to the building with every item that you place in it. Okay, make sure the lighting is correct. Make sure 
the uh, the lighting and the people and the shadows are correct. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Last but not least, I'm going to add a shadow to my people. Okay, so I'm going to say file place, and I already have the shadow. All right, I have the shadow in place here. People gray. I'm going to say place. It's obviously way too big. All right, I'm going to make it about the same size as the people in our scene. So about like that, that's close enough. And before I place it, I'm gonna hold down control and I'm gonna transform it so that the shadow sits on the top of the grass, just like in the same fashion as uh, the people, okay? So about like that. Okay, and I can see the shadow over here on my building. Technically, yeah, actually that looks pretty good. Okay, so there's a shadow on the building, so I wanna make sure the shadow of the people is going in the same direction. Okay, make sure the feet do pretty well in, in terms of lining up. Okay, so I'm gonna say about like that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and place that. And I'm gonna add a multiply blending mode to this. Okay, so that it becomes actually transparent. Okay, and you may have to continue to add some opacity so that the color of the shadow is the same color as the shadow for the building. That's pretty close, maybe a little bit more. Okay, but again, just like we did, let's add shadow to this. Whoops, let's say 50. And I'm gonna move that layer right below my people. Okay, I want them, I want the shadow to be in front of the people, okay? so. Now I need that shadow to also blend in with the grass, okay? It's the shadow still feels like it's just sitting on top of the grass. It doesn't really feel like it belongs, okay? And you could perform this exact same task to the shadow from the building. The shadow definitely feels the same way, okay? I won't perform the same task uh, on every portion of the building, but uh, those are all things to think about, okay? So to do that, I'm going to turn off everything in my scene except for that shadow, okay? So, and my and my people. So, I'm going to turn off grass layer, people, turn off the dodge and burn. Let's turn off everything but that shadow cuz right now we just have a little bit too much going on. Okay? So, it's a lot easier to understand when we just have well, that's probably fine, okay? I kind of want to know where my building is, okay? But I want to now manipulate the shadow to make it look so that it blends into the grass. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I am going to create, again, a new layer uh, for this shadow. Okay, so I am going to click on my hidden line layer. I'm gonna select the white. Actually, let me think about this. No, I don't need to do that, Control D. Let's go back to, to my shadow layer. Okay, and using that shadow layer, I'm going to create a box for the white below it. Okay, so I'm going to put that box right there. I'm going to say edit fill. In fact, let's turn off the back round layer just so you can see this a little bit better. Edit. All right, I'll just use my, my brush tool. Let's make sure we select the right layer. Let's rasterize it so that I can draw on it. And let's make sure that my color is white. Okay, and let's fill in that box. Okay, like so. Actually, let me back up a second. Let's make the opacity of this 100% for now. Okay, and now let's fill in this box. White, okay. The reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna be able to use the grass tool, but I want the foreground of this shadow to be white. Okay, the reason being is because when you apply that multiply blending mode to it, it's gonna make that portion of it transparent. Okay, so I can go ahead and do Control D, deselect from that little box, and I am going to go over to my clone stamp tool, okay, and I'm gonna hold down Alt, and I'm gonna select the white from that box, okay? What that's gonna allow me to do is draw the grass in white like so. Everyone see how I'm doing that? And I'm just going to, it's still a little large for the grass, and I'm just going to cover all of the fronts of that shadow, all the front edges, okay, about like that, 
a little bit in the background, maybe a little bit over here. Okay, so about like that. Okay, here's the front of the head, front of the arm. All right, might have to have kind of a small brush to get into some of those little areas, okay? And that there should about do it. Okay, does everyone understand why I'm doing what I'm doing? Okay, the reason why is because when I turn on the multiply blending mode for this object, I want the white to become transparent. Okay, so it'll ultimately remove this portion of the shadow. Okay, so performing the same exercise, I'm going to select that white and I'm going to delete it and I'm going to fill it with black this time. So edit fill, I want to say black, okay, control D to deselect. I'm going to perform the same exact task but to the back of the shadow. Okay, so again, clone stamp, I'm going to hold down alt, select the black layer, okay, and I'm going to just kind of feather Keep doing that. The back of my shadow. It looks really rough right now, but I promise you though that once we turn on all the layers, this is gonna it'll look nice. So about like that. Okay, that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this box now. Okay, control D. Let's see, let's go ahead and uh, turn on all of my layers. Da, 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 da. Okay, so now, now that, you know, I, I should have actually made that, that grass not so black, but you'll see that in the front, that edge, because I added that white, is a lot softer. So that shadow, and I could still take out of my shadow, let's reduce this to about 50%, okay? That shadow now kind of sits much more soft into that grass, okay? See how that looks now? It's not quite so rigid like this one back here. Our goal is for it to look a little bit more like that, okay? So that shadow now blends a lot nicer into that scene, okay? Any questions about what I've done so far? So, yeah. Uh, so, I was just wondering, uh, do you have to like twist detail inside? No, but something to think about is um, I don't really want the insides to be white. Okay, so I might just apply like a material to the inside just to kind of give it some texture. Okay, but you will see the inside. So, you know, it, to answer your question, it's kind of yes and no. I don't want you to, you don't have to put a ton of material on the inside, but you probably want to add some texture. Okay, because, and make sure that it's behind your window layers. All right, just so that the inside is not white. Now, I guess you could argue uh, maybe the inside of it's painted white. Ultimately, you have to kind of take it to wherever you think it needs to go. All right, if you feel like it needs it, then do it. If you don't think it needs it, then don't do it. So I'm not saying everybody needs to do every one of the little things that I've said, but they're all different ideas that you might use to ultimately make it look more realistic. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the recording just for a second. Okay, so everyone that's in my class, I just added a few more details to the rendering. So this is a good example of what you know, I know everyone can do, okay? So feel free to look at the recording. I'll upload it to YouTube right now, but added some birds, added some more texture, some more details. I could take it a step, if I wanted to get one more step, I could probably do the interior materials. That would add a little bit more realism to it. Um, but other than that, that's, that, you know, that, 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 that's kind of a good example of what I'd like to see from everyone, okay? That's it.